Okay. Let's look at the... Don't know what just happened. Wrong thing. Let's look at the top of this page. In the figure, BA and BC are opposite rays. And BD, array BD bisects angle ABE. Okay, so it's an angle bisector. So we just got told that, that ray BD, so this ray right here, bisects this great big angle ABE, which tells us that ABD. So what does that tell us right there? That tells me that angle ABD is congruent to angle EBD. So these two measures are congruent. Okay. Awesome, that's a great place to start. What else do we know? We know the measure of angle ABD is 4x plus 14 ABD. So this one is 4x plus 14. And DBE, or I labeled it EBD, but I could have also said, let's cross that out, put it the right way. How about that? DBE, just to keep it matched with theirs. But it's the same thing. DBE, it's the same angle, is 8x minus 32. I just had named it differently, not really thinking about it. We want to find the measure of angle DBE. So we want to find the measure of angle DBE. Okay? Well, if I know these two angles are congruent, what can I do? Can't I just set these equal to each other? I'm going to do that. So I'm going to have 4x plus 14 equals 8x minus 32. Right? And I'm just going to solve it. Minus 4x from both sides. And at the same time, add 32 to both sides. And I get what? Let's see. 32 plus that is 46 equals 4x. And that's gone. That's gone. And then let's go ahead and divide both sides by 4. And I get that x equals 11.5 degrees. Remember, we're talking about degrees because we're talking about angle measure. But it wants me to find the measure of angle DBE. So the measure of angle DBE, we're told, equals 8x minus 32. So instead of x, I'm going to put 11.5. And 8 times 11.5 is going to get me 92 minus 32, which equals 60 degrees. So I know now know that the measure of angle DB, so the measure of angle DBE equals 60 degrees. You know what else, though? I could also say ABD is 60 degrees as well, because we know those angles are congruent. So lots of stuff we can tell from this. All right, I'm going to go look at a slide to fill these in. Uh, let's go ahead and move on back to that slide. I'm going to show these one row at a time. Again, not for long, so I'm going to assume you're going to pause it and write down the information on the graphs and as well as the definitions. Okay, this is why I didn't have you write the definitions earlier. I wanted them on this graph. So you'll notice this matches. Uh, the top of your graph for special angle pair definition, examples and non-examples. Go ahead and pause this, write down this information, but this just tells us adjacent angles are two angles that lie in the same plane, have a common vertex and a common side, but have no common interior points. So they're adjacent because the inside of this angle has no points in common with the inside of this angle, but they share a common side, which is right here, and they share a common vertex right there. A non-example is this. These do not have a common side or a common vertex. Even if they're the same angle, it doesn't matter. They're not touching, so they're not adjacent angles. Okay, pause this, write it down, and remove it. Now we're going to talk about a linear pair. A linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles that have to be touching, share a common side, a common vertex, with uh, a pair of adjacent angles with non-common sides that are opposite rays. So they have one common side, but then the non-common side, notice, the non-common side here, these were not opposite rays. Those don't make a straight line. But right here, notice these opposite rays from here to here and here to here at the vertex make a straight line. That's because if I were to add angle 1 and angle 2 together, they add to 180 degrees. A straight line always measures to 180 degrees. So I only gave you one graph. 
Uh, and what we can say is angle one and angle two are linear pairs. So you have angle one and angle two there, write this below it. But then go ahead and draw your arc on here. Draw a little arc on here. And make sure and label this 45 degrees and this one 135 degrees. And I need to put my degree symbol. Because if I add those together, they add up to 180. And we're going to use that to help us solve a lot of unknowns. All right, pauses, ready, set, moving on. This is our last one right here. Again, I only gave you one. Just go ahead and label all those points right there. So in other words, um, we're talking about vertical angles. Whenever you have uh, two lines that meet, they're opposite angles. So angles that are diagonal from each other, like one and three are congruent. Two and four are congruent to each other, okay? Now, they have to be lines that are meeting. Like right here, if you look at this non-example, notice how we have a line right here, but when you go off to, uh, I should probably use a highlighter to be better. When we see this little line right here, right, it, uh, it's, not, it's not jamming. That is not a straight line. So that is not creating vertical angles, okay? Only if it's two lines that intersect, like we see over here in the actual given example. Awesome. All right, pause this if you need to, ready, set, we're moving on to different things. Maybe, there we go. Down below here, we have one last little problem. It says make a small table, or Marin wants to make a small table for a room. She found a design online that she likes, but she needs to know the measure of angle BAE find the measure of angle BAE and provide a justification. So we want to find the measure of angle BAE, this angle right here. Well, let's look. If I look at the measure, if I look at this, I'm going to call this angle 1. And over here I'm going to call it angle 2. What I know is angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. They form a line because this is just one solid piece of wood. So what does that tell us then? Okay, I know that angle 1 plus angle 2 equal 180 degrees. So then, to be able to solve for that, so angle 1, by the way, is that angle A. Right, we just called it a 1 there, but it's really angle A. So here's what I'm going to tell you. If I take 180 degrees and subtract 72 degrees, that's going to get me because I know this whole thing is 180 degrees, isn't it? So because of that, I'm going to subtract this 72 degrees right here, and I'm going to get angle A. So when I subtract that, I get 108 degrees, which equals the measure of angle. Can't really see that angle. Measure of angle A. Boom. So when we have a linear pair, we just subtract them, and we're good to go. All right. That's it. With that said... My lips are dry. Peace out. Bye, guys.